Hi, it's Chef Rick, and today I'm making salmon and colcannon. Right, colcannon is an Irish mashed potato. So first thing we'll do is start with those potatoes. These are Maris Pipers, which we're going to peel. And then just chop them into fours because we're going to boil them and it just helps them boil quicker and more evenly if we do it that way instead of whole. So a pan on a medium heat, salted water, bring that to the boil and drop your potato wedges in very carefully. I put them in this way one at a time because I'm not using the biggest pan in the world and I didn't want the water to uh, overflow or splash everywhere, but I just saw it. Just about the right amount in there. One of the other ingredients in a col cannon is spring onion. So we're going to prep this spring onion first of all, like we always do. It's going to top and tail it like that, which means take off the top and the bottom. So you've got nice workable pieces. And with half of the spring onion, we're going to chop it into nice big chunks. Just like that. And the other half of the spring onion, we're going to chop it nice and finely. So hold as many as you can together like that and slice down and you'll get those perfect, nice little thin bits of the spring onion. And you can use all of the white and all of the green because we've topped and tailed them. So don't just use one or the other. So we've got some finely chopped spring onion and some roughly chopped spring onion. Uh, into a pan of salty water, we're just going to put some kale, some curly kale. And this is really, really hot, this water. We've got it on a really high heat because we're just going to cook this for around about one minute. So nice and fast, nice and hot. You can see that's really quite bubbling away quite aggressively, but that's fine. Um, by cooking this hot, uh, so by cooking this really, really quickly, you see we just drain it. You keep the colour, you keep all of that flavour, uh, and you're just blanching it. You're just taking the edge off. So you'll see what we're going to do with that curly kale in a moment. So into a blender or a food processor, whatever you have, you put the curly kale along with the spring onion that we chopped chunky. Give that a blitz, just for about uh, about 20 seconds or so, just so it's lovely and broken up after so that's the curly kale and spring onion mixture here are the potatoes you can see that they're starting to break and fall apart it's about 25 minutes into a colander back into the pan that we've just boiled them in nice large knob of butter as always all the quantities will be down in the description below and we're just going to start mashing that Don't add any more butter yet at this point. It will start to all find itself. You'll see that the uh, the butter and the potato go together really nicely. When you're ready to, if it gets a little bit too thick, use some whole milk. And the whole milk is just gonna thin everything down nicely. Or loosen it up, should I say. See how beautiful and buttery and creamy that mash is. Taste it and then season it with salt and pepper. <clears throat> when you're boiling the potatoes in that salt water, some salt is gonna go in there, so never assume you know how much salt it needs. Always taste it. Uh, so you've put salt, pepper in there, and then the blitzed up kale and spring onion mix. So you want that all nice and combined. And then now you add the finely chopped spring onions, which are just gonna give lovely texture. Don't forget we didn't cook those, we didn't boil them or anything. They're just offering loads and loads of flavor, loads of texture. They look beautiful, they add just an extra layer of green to it. And that is an absolutely beautiful colcannon. 
So it's kind of rich, sweet, creamy mashed potato, but it has that uh, that savoury element from the from the curly kale. Lovely crunch of the spring onions. It's beautiful. And then that's ready to serve, or. Um, Knob of butter into a saucepan, small saucepan. We're going to be making here now like a, a hollandaise with tarragon. So we're going to juice a lemon. This is all prep as well. So then you've got your butter melt, you've got your lemon juice there ready to go. This is tarragon. Tarragon you can just tear apart. There's only a couple of like stalky bits in there. The, 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 the very, very thin stalks that connect the leaves, they're absolutely fine to go in and chop up. All you want to remove is like the main core stalk like that. So just pick them apart uh, and then chop your tarragon leaves roughly. Just like we do with garlic, just like anything at all. Just keep working back and forth, back and forth, bringing it back together. Just working that knife across it. Take your time. And that's your chopped tarragon. I'm going to separate an egg. So we always separate eggs over the container that you're happy for the white to go into. And there you go, just literally let gravity do the work. Just pass it back and forth between your hands. Don't be precious about it, you can be, uh, you can handle an egg yolk. Separate the other one. So into a bain-marie. Bain-marie is where we cook indirectly over a, a so small saucepan of hot water, which is simmering away. Into that we just put some white wine vinegar and our egg yolks. And we'll just keep on whisking them, keep on moving them around, get them all combined. But they're never in direct heat. You don't do this directly in a pan because the egg yolks will just cook and scramble. So by doing it indirectly, we keep heating them, but we don't cook them. Slowly, we're going to add the melted butter. And you don't need to add this drop by drop by drop like we do with the mayonnaise. But just every time you put a little extra splash in, just make sure it's all nice and mixed and combined. And you feel the sauce sort of thickening, but because the butter's hot, and the eggs are hot. You see, just check on the water temperature as well to keep lifting up bain marie. Once all the butter's combined, take it off the heat. And as it starts to cool, the sauce will thicken. In goes the tarragon. Otherwise, that, this would just be a straight hollandaise. Apart from the introduction of the tarragon there, this is exactly how you'd make a hollandaise sauce. And some salt and pepper, or just salt, sorry, we're just going to season this one with uh, salt, and, yeah, salt and pepper. And some of the fresh lemon juice. Now it's going to be slightly thinner <clears throat> at this stage because as it cools, as it's now off the heat, there is still warm water underneath, but as it cools, it's going to thicken slightly because of that butter. But to taste it, that should be absolutely perfect. I'm going to take some fresh asparagus, just remove an inch off the end, onto a parchment lined baking tray. We're just going to season them with salt, pepper, and extra virgin olive oil. To a nice hot oven for about 12 to 15 minutes salmon fillets so <laughs> i'll show you what i do here so in a pan with some uh, extra virgin olive oil we get the pan really really hot and then we just lay them unseasoned we just lay them skin side down in the pan and what we do here normally is get the skin crispy and it's really easy to remove the skin and then i fry the skin separately and i create like little crackers out of the skin now these ones are burnt so we've not used them but you will still see me kind of removing the the skin from the salmon you know look at it there you know it's what a waste so remove the skin 
And now we're just dealing with almost like two chunks of meat here. Um, so we're just going to season them. And you can see how that top half where the skin was has already had a slight cooking. So again, just because it's fish anyway, we don't want to, uh, we certainly don't want to overcook it. So into a really, really hot pan, some olive oil and some butter. And now the skin side down, the salmon. And don't forget this pan is really, really hot. So we're gonna cook these for probably around about a minute. Season them on the side that's uh, obviously exposed. Probably around about two minutes to be honest, because they probably had just around about a minute on that one side. Turn them over and you can see, just like you would with a steak, you're getting like a, a little bit of a crust on the outside now, just. Uh, but the inside is going to be super, super soft and flaky. Um, this is butter, so we're just basting the salmon as we would with any meat that we're cooking like this. Give them a quick turn just to make sure that the sides are getting that lovely, uh, lovely crust on them. But that's it. They've had two minutes in that pan and they're done. So do not overdo the, uh, the salmon. Into your serving bowl goes your calcanin. Nice healthy portion of this. The asparagus out of the oven, lovely and hot. Layer that over the top. Perfect piece of salmon over there, and then I would normally serve the skin at an angle, like a lovely crispy wafer, but whatever. I'll do that in the next video. Uh, the tarragon hollandaise, and that's it. Salmon, Kalkanen, it's healthy, it's filling, it's absolutely beautiful, it's perfect any time of the year. Um, next time I'll do it with the fish skin on there, I promise. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next one.